Hey there, imagine this, someone, definitely not you, because who wants a heart attack, right? Is going through the scary ordeal of a heart attack. They rush them to the hospital, but they arrive later than they should have. Oh, no. And trust me, times everything in these moments. So, what's the deal here? Part of their heart muscles wasn't getting enough oxygen-rich blood for too long, causing some irreversible damage. It's a harsh reality of heart attacks. The longer the blockage, the nastier it gets. Now, in a healthy heart, electrical impulses keep things sticking smoothly, letting the heart pump blood efficiently. But when a coronary artery gets blocked, it's a bad news. Without oxygen, cells start dying, leading to permanent damage to the heart muscles. As the damaged part heals, it's replaced by this tough fibrous scar tissue. Unlike the healthy stuff, scar tissue doesn't do great job at conducting electrical signals. And that's where things go haywire on an ECG. When electrical impulses encounter scar tissues, their conduction is delayed and disrupted. When there's a delay in electrical signals traveling through the heart, it messes with the timing of ventricular activation, the process where the lower chamber of the heart's coiled ventricles get ready to pump blood out of the heart. And this delay shows up as a prolonged or pathological cadence on the electrocardiograph. In our ECG, there is indeed a Q wave present, which signifies the initial phase of ventricular activation or ventricular contraction. It's significantly smaller, both in amplitude and duration, compared to a pathological Q wave. This difference in size and duration is an important indicator for differentiating between a normal and a pathological Q wave. The amplitude of Q wave is a reflection of the amount of scar tissue present in the heart muscles. Deeper and wider Q waves indicate a greater extent of scar tissue and consequently more severe damage to the heart muscles. Now look at this ECG and tell me, is there a pathological Q wave present? No, not at all. How can we tell? Well, typically, the Q wave should be the first negative deflection on the ECG after the P wave. In this case, it follows the R wave, which means it's a RSR1 pattern, which is typically seen in right bundle branch blockages, and it has nothing to do with injury to the heart muscles or formation of scar tissues. Now, take a look at this. These are the textbook example of pathological Q waves. In lead 2, 3 and AVF, they follow the criteria precisely. They are the first negative deflection after the P waves and they are wider and have a higher amplitude compared to a normal Q wave. Now, the leads that shows pathological Q waves are likely to correspond to area of the heart where the scar tissue has formed. Let's say, that in a patient's CCV, pathological Q waves are observed in lead 2, 3 and AVF. It's likely that scar tissue, based on this finding, it's likely that scar tissue has formed in the inferior wall of the heart. This is because lead 2, 3 and AVF correspond to the inferior region of the heart. So here's your mission. Sift through the ECGs we have got and spot any weird looking Q waves. They will be bigger or uh, longer than usual. They must have a pathological Q wave format as we have discussed. It's been a pleasure guiding you through today's journey. Until next time, this is Dr. Ajke signing off. Stay tuned and keep those ECG skills sharp. Thank you.